story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. A very good evening to you and welcome to Core TV Prime Time News. I am Nenna Oragwa. And our top stories tonight. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. In our first story, President Mohamed Buhari says the target of the administration is to achieve 10,000 megawatts of distributable power in the next three years. President Buhari stated this while declaring the National Economic Summit open in Abuja. The president maintains that power, housing, manufacturing and agriculture remain the focus of his government. State House correspondent Abiola Luwale has more on the two-day National Economic Summit. His reports. With the continued dwindling of funds to all tiers of government due to fall in all revenue, stakeholders are concentrating on evolving creative ways of diversifying the nation's economy. The National Economic Summit called by the federal government is to rally stakeholders on how to tackle the economic downturn facing the country. Declaring the summit open, President Mohamed Buhari affirms that power, agriculture, housing and manufacturing top the agenda of his government. He says achieving 10,000 megawatts of distributable power in the next three years is the target of his administration. He, however, maintains that his government is in a dilemma over the privatization of the nation's power assets. In the three years left for this administration, we have given ourselves the target of 10,000 megawatts distributable power. In 2016 alone, we intend to add 2,000 megawatts the national grid. Vice President Yemil Shimbaju and Governor Abdulaziz Yari of Samfara State say this summit is a veritable avenue to fashion ways of diversifying the nation's economy. And state governments realize that our economic situation is worsened by our over dependence on oil revenues and the failure to diversify our economies sufficiently. The directories, therefore, provide us with another opportunity to look at all the issues with, with the fresh eyes and see if we can discover a new perspective. Governor Yodili Fayoshi of Ekiti State, a major critique of the APC-led federal government, made a surprise appearance at the summit. It's been an opportunity to listen to the views of others on how to diversify our economy and to do things differently because naturally we've all taken things for granted. According to President Muhammad Buhari, power, housing, agriculture, and manufacturing will be the vocal point of his administration in the next three years. But what Nigerians are seeking is for this two-day economic summit to bring forth economic blueprint that will benchmark the economic development of the country. From the presidential villa in Abuja, Abiola Oluoli reporting for Core TV News. The business community and the National Assembly have begun developing a framework for collaboration towards improving Nigeria's business environment. The kickoff of the first National Assembly Business Environment Roundtable is expected to target making Nigeria a globally successful nation and a platform for a consistent review of business opportunities in Nigeria, as well as create the environment for job enhancement. National Assembly correspondent Jamil Afegboa reports. 
Kiari Bukar, chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, in his opening speech says the fact that the Nigerian National Assembly is partnering with the group is an indication that Nigeria is ready to take the next step towards economic development, stating that the roundtable is an embodiment of a conducive business environment. The National Assembly Business Environment Roundtable is a platform designed to ensure that through research and advocacy, the private sector legislature and executive engage to promote relevant and sound public policy that affects Nigerian business environment. There is also a demonstration of the resolve of the executive, the legislature, the business community to collectively improve the business environment as this will help a great deal in advancing government's desire to diversify the economy. The mandate of the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment to enable trade will be and continues to be deputized without a competitive law. We therefore urge the Senate to ensure the quick passage of the bill. The President of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, says the National Assembly is ready to work with all arms of government to ensure that the enabling laws to drive the dream of the present administration are enacted quickly and passed. Our agenda was conceived on the notion of a renewed national development imperative which puts our nursing private sector as a fulcrum for national growth and development. And to achieve this, we will require deliberate steps to redefine the Nigerian business and investment climate. The National Economic Summit Group is working tirelessly so to see that the job of creating jobs should not rest on government alone. Rather, government should create the necessary environment to create sustainable wealth for the people. This partnership with the National Assembly is a good step towards achieving just that. Jamil Afegwa. Core TV News, Abuja. Ministers of Agriculture in the West African sub-region have been urged to work together to prefer solutions to the myriad of problems facing agricultural production in the sub-region. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Aldo Ogbe, made this call during a meeting with the delegation from the World Bank led by the Vice President, African Region, Mokhtar Diop. The minister pointed out that the issue of cattle grazing and livestock production, which has posed serious problems to West African countries, resulting to violence between farmers and headsmen. It states that the attention of the government had heated to for cash in some segments of farmers such as rice, cotton, soya bean. Farmers, while targeting on the cattle farmers, will now resort to self-help that often leads to violence. Ogbe further disclosed that cattle robin usually deplete the nutrients, thereby reducing the quality and quantity of milk and meat produced. The former president of Nigeria, Lucia Gombasanjo, has blamed an end in conflict in the African continent and poor leadership occasioned by the failure to diversify the African society. He also believes that the underdevelopment of Africa is caused by outside interference and the NATO airstrikes in Libya in 2011 that led to the removal from power of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. Speaking at a press conference on an upcoming Tana High Level Forum on Security in Africa, a passenger said the repercussions are being felt in Mali, Nigeria, and the Sahel region. He says leaders are feeling their people because they've not been able to prevent marginalization in their societies, prevent injustice, reduce unemployment, reduce poverty, and that they have not embraced democracy and good governance. He adds that some of African leaders are responsible for instability on the continent because they have failed to manage diversity in their societies. We now move on to River State. The Independent National Electoral Commission says it is compelled to suspend all further action concerning the rerun elections conducted in River State on Saturday, pending the receipt of a comprehensive report from its field officials and monitors. The electoral body says the action is as a result of the difficult circumstance which saw the returning officers collating and declaring results in one federal and nine state constituencies where the disruption and malpractices were not so widespread. Pursuant to the orders of the Court of Appeal, the Independent National Electoral Commission had conducted elections into various seats in both the National and the River State House of Assembly on Saturday, March 19, 2016. 
However, some of these elections witnessed the disruption of the process, including the barricading of some of the INEC local government offices, registration area centers used for the distribution of electoral materials, which led to the late commencement of the exercise in some places and consequently a smooth takeoff. INEC condemns the level of threats, violence, and intimidation of election officials and voters by well armed thugs and miscreants allegedly voting, acting on behalf of some politicians which marred elections in some areas. The governor of River State, yes, on weekend, says rigging the rerun election in the state will be difficult, pointing out that the people are on the side. Addressing journalist and Paul Tarkat, Governor Wicker said the election has clearly shown who is on ground and who is accepted by the people, adding that the people's will always will, will always prevail. Wicker also accused the military of working against public interest, saying rather than tackling security challenges, they were busy intimidating and harassing reverse people. Violent sporadic shootings characterized the reverse rerun election. This resulted in the cancellation of eight local government elections in the state. Our correspondent has more in this report from our flagship program, Code Digest. Mixed reactions have continued to trail the reverse rerun election as pocket of violence were recorded, which resulted in the cancellation of election in eight local government area of the state. Social commentator on the flagship program called Digest reacts on the issue of militarization of the election. Honorable Rotimichi Bikadmichi was escorted to Area 1 police station with by 80 military armed officers. 80, not 8, not 5. 80 paid and maintained by Wata's money. Was Amichi going to war? It was not wrong for Amichi to protect himself because Wiki had already told him to write his will. Wiki had dared him to come into that process if he was man enough. However, the role of the federal government in ensuring free and fair election was also called to questioning. We cannot continue to be blaming everything on the federal government. As far as I am concerned, I can be called an APC apologist, I can be called an whatever name, but all I know is that I am from, um, for the building of the new Nigeria we all voted for. In Nigerian politics, they don't like to complete the seat. Mm. APC know that they have no ground in the river state. Okay. Even before Amitri was the governor who took uh, the whole uh, all AP, uh, PDP to APC, knew that they have no follow-up. The president, president during the time of uh, uh, good luck, Jonathan, they mm. complained bitterly about the militarization of uh, APC election. So if he, the same person today, will be doing that, then what is he telling us? As Nigerians await the outcome of the election, it is expected that violence and killings of innocent ones will be eradicated in future elections of Nigeria. Away from happenings in River State, we now move on to court matters. The former Chief of Defence Staff, Air Marshal Alex Bade, who has been prosecuted for money laundering charges, is asking a federal high court in Abuja to vary the two billion naira bill conditions imposed on him. Justice Okonabang had in a ruling granted the ex Chief of Defence Staff bill in the sum of two billion naira with two charities worth one billion naira each. Judiciary correspondent Basil Okafo has more in this report. Former Chief of Defence Staff Alex Bade has been on remand in Kuje prisons, Abuja, since his arraignment by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on March 7th. Due to his inability to fulfill the bail conditions handed by the court to him, Bade, through his team of lawyers, has filed an application to vary the bail conditions. It is gathered that Bade and his team of lawyers were unable to find shorties who own properties worth two billion naira in Abuja as directed by the court. At the last adjourned date, Justice Abang fees March 23rd for prosecution witness to continue their testimonies against the ex-chief of defense staff. The EFCC is prosecuting Bade along a firm, Ialikam Nigeria Limited, on a 10-count charge of money laundering on alleged fraudulent removal of 3.97 billion naira from the Nigerian Air Force account in 2013. 
Allegations of sexual harassment leveled against a teacher at the Queen's College, Yaba, Lagos State, is being entirely investigated. So it shows the chairman of the Parents Teachers Association of the school at the school's all students meeting held on Sunday. Mayor Kumako Terabo files in his report presented from our studios. <laughs> This may sound like a cacophony of voices, but the emotions are not misplaced in the light of the damning report of the sexual abuse against the biology teacher who also doubles as the hostel maintenance officer, Olasheni Oshifala, as old students of Queen's College Yaba make the matter a priority for discussion at their meeting. The social media has been recently awash with accusations that Oshifala had molested a GSS2 student sometimes last month. The report also indicts the school's management of cover-up, especially by the vice principal, Mrs. Coyote. In a statement released earlier on Sunday, quoting the principal, the matron as well as few students is clearing the teacher of any wrongdoing. Some old students, however, burst the bubble when they attest to the possible trueness of the report. While the old students express shock at the news, the body assures a thorough investigation into the matter. We are ready to get useful information, and I want to urge that at this point we cannot take the time until the investigations are concluded. And that's why our appeal to everyone to just remain calm and be assured that not so the left of the turn. Meanwhile, students of Queen's College protested the allegation against their teacher on Monday with placards. Civil society groups, parents and Nigerians all over hope this matter is investigated speedily in the interest of these young minds with a view of assuring a better learning environment at the girls only Queen's College, Yaba, Lagos. It's still called TV Prime Time News. We'll take a break now, return with more stars. Just stay with us. Mommy more. Where would I be without you? Eh? Show your sweet and caring mother how much she means to you. Celebrate her with the special Peak Packs. Peak, it's in you. Glad to have you back. If you just joined us, it's still Cold TV Primetime News. A quick reminder of our top stars.
For more of our news stories and other information, you can join us on the social media platforms facebook.com forward slash call tv news on twitter at call tv news ng and on our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash call tv live space news child rights activists are seeking the participation of faith-based leaders in ways to ensure the child and family health issues reach the grassroots and policy makers the partnership and advocacy for child and family health says religious leaders from across the country are the right target to lend their voices on the matter the group says at an advocacy session the traditional and religious leaders are better equipped to educate the subjects and health challenges facing innocent and ignorant mothers our correspondent bukola feni has more in this report from our studios stakeholders such as civil societies religious leaders and journalists were in attendance at the Partnership in Advocacy for Child and Family Health meeting in Abuja. The President's Federation of Muslim Women used the platform to solicit for support of the government at all levels to curb health challenges facing children and women, especially in the northern Nigerian. She also urged the women to make use of the primary health care facilities in their area. She said the coalition is targeting women from the age of 15 to 49 of reproductive age and also children from infant to five years. We are playing a dual role of advocating to the policy makers because they have to get these um, commodities available and also the uh, doctors and the nurses that are supposed to give these services. A member of the Christian Association of Nigeria also called on all mothers to always immunize their children as well as participate in family planning issues. She says the Christian community in a zone from Kaduna State is availing themselves of the medical facilities available and their group. And her group usually engage in advocacy and awareness program to disseminate information to its target audience. This seminar will help us to be of uh, the information they had received and I'm sure after this many of them will get to know better what is expected of them as, as mothers what they can do in order to bring up their children physically and even spiritually. For this other representative from Forum and Lagos, the media should do more to ensure the messages of vaccine and routine immunization activities get to the grassroots. She said issues of children and family issues is of high importance to the community and country at large. To adding that the rate of infant mortality is lower in a part of the country due to massive publicity. The organization have been able to try as much as possible to enlighten them. They are now aware that they have to take care of themselves, health-wise, and those of their children because of the future, especially when it comes to these issues concerning the path fact. Stakeholders at the forum says there is need for all and to be on deck to stop what they say is, is the incessant killing of innocent children and ignorant mother as well as results of preventable health issues. Businessmen and women have been expressing diverse opinions on trading in imported and made in Nigeria goods, while some express low qualities responsible for the patronage of foreign goods. Others believe that anti-Nigerians consume more of indigenous items. The nation's economy will not improve. Our correspondent, Akin Obake, has more in this report. Sight and sound of the popular Okeani markets in Lagos. Recent clamor for Nigerians to use more goods and services produced locally have been met with various arguments even as the fall in Naira against the dollar continues to impact on the prices of goods across the market. Things are hard. There is no fuel. Goods are expensive. We haven't made much sales since morning. Prices change every time we make purchases. That would be better. If they will ban imported goods and promote made in Nigeria items, we will gladly sell it. Manufacturers should produce items of good quality, better than the foreign ones. However, some traders say they cannot compromise quality, hence their continual patronage for imported goods. 
to make all these things in Nigeria. Then we kill it now, they kill everything, no, no need of making it in Nigeria. The Chivita they made Nigeria here, nobody is buying it. We are, well, nobody, we are buying important something, nobody is buying Chivita again. Too much sugar. They write no sugar, but when we drink it, we find out that a lot of sugar is there. They are by causing people diabetes and other things. Whichever the divide, policies formulated to promote local content patronage will in the long run determine consumers' love for either imported or made in Nigeria goods. Akin Obakeye, Core TV News, Lagos. Funding is one of the most important ways to sustain and maintain the laid-down vision and objective of any parish state or government agency, especially the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The thought was chaired at a forum organized for Nigerian parents to wake up to the reality of what the children might tend to be and how to curb excesses. Our correspondent, Sarah Ayeku, reports. With rapt attention, parents listen to dangers and effects of drug abuse on the young and the old. Within the last decade, the consumption of hard drugs has drastically increased in Nigeria. Substances such as alcohol, cannabis among others are now being taken frequently, and in large quantities by our youth, damning the side effects. How aware should you be? At this point, our level of awareness of the presence on devastating effect of drug is less than 10 percent. It's only the people that have been touched that seem to be aware. It is a huge problem. Although policies have been made to curb the abuse of drugs, implementation is needed. I know the government started NDLA. I think we need to restructure NDLA in terms of its activities. And then we need to fund NDLA. I know that they don't have enough funds. According to statistics, Nigeria used to be considered as a transit nation, but now it is known as a user nation. How can we salvage what we have left? If we don't work together in a holistic manner, the work of NDLA can show. They may be interdicting, stopping people from taking drugs abroad, but what about the drug that is here? We need to work together. This is the time. As the world revolves, a man and its values seem to be caught up in the middle of good and evil. It is important that we hold on to the good values on which any nation, and indeed Nigeria, must be built. Sarah Ayoku, Court TV News, Lagos. The National Rebirth Project has unveiled the largest art piece in Africa, painted by 36 artists in the country and the Federal Capital Territory, who are passionate about reuniting and developing the country. Bokola Feni has more in this report presented from our studios. Wife of the President, Aisha Buhari, has commended the 37 Nigerian artists from all 36 states of the Federation, including FCT, for their 100 days of selfless service in putting together the largest art piece. Aisha Buhari, who was represented by the wife of the Vice President, Dolakbo Ushibajo, while speaking at this unveiling ceremony of the Nigerian rebirth, noted that the unity showcase in the artwork is a lesson to be learned wherever the piece is displayed. She said the artwork will unify all, all citizens of the country, especially at this period when some are agitating for separation of the country. Also speaking at the unveiling of the artwork, the National Coordinator Nigerian Rebirth Project, Comrade Isaac Balani says, the project is an initiative of the patriotic Nigerian who are passionate about a new Nigerian that will be rebirthed through dedicated, innovative and intellectual sound project in order to confront the negative impression about Nigerian globally. He is urging the Nigerian youth to develop the value of promoting the Nigerian dream. The negative impression about Nigeria nationally and also globally. The past and present challenges of our nation need to be confronted by the rebirth of a new Nigeria so that our future can be reshaped. The art project symbolizes Nigerian renewed commitment to the nation building as well as the strength of the nation. We'll take another break now and return with more stories. Just stay with us. Don't 
family today and then get five times the value of every recharge. Recharge with Star 555 Star Pin Hash on the Airtel network and feel at home. Airtel, the smartphone network. Glad to have you back on the foreign scene. President Muhammad Buhari has congratulated the president-elect of Benin Republic, Patrice Talon, his electoral victory in the presidential runoff held on Sunday, March 20, 2016. In a statement by Special Advisor and Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino, the president commends the government and people of Benin Republic on the peaceful and orderly conduct of the presidential elections. He equally lost the main opposition who was standard bearer of the ruling coalition, Prime Minister Lionel Zinzo, for upholding the democratic process by promptly congratulating his main challenger, Talon, for his electoral victory. The president says he is encouraged by the determination and exemplary conduct demonstrated by Benin's in coming out unmasked to perform the civic duties. President Buhari trusts that the Beninese will give the incumbent government all the necessary support to succeed and reaffirm that Nigeria is a beneficiary of the dividends of democracy. We continue to build strong partnerships with our neighbors for the peace, progress and prosperity of the citizens. The International Criminal Court has found former Congolese Vice President Jean Pierre Bembe guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity committed in Central African Republic more than a decade ago. The verdict announced today focused on the responsibility of a military commander for the actions of his troops as Bembe was accused of commanding a militia that went on a spree of murder, rape, and pillage. The charges two of crimes against humanity and three of war crimes stem from his private army's intervention on the side of CAR's then president, Angie Felix Partes, in the neighboring country's civil war. Bemba's long-running trial was the first of the ICC to feature allegations of systematic sexual abuse by soldiers in the conflict. U.S. President Barack Obama has promised that there will be a change in the communist island, Cuba. Addressing journalists, Obama acknowledged that the change would not occur overnight. The president pointed out that what has been seen is a reopening of the embassy in Oldo. There's two significant differences around the human rights and individual liberties inside of Cuba. There is need to maximize the ability to prompt more change. Obama, who arrives in the Communist Island a day earlier with his family, is the first U.S. president to visit in 88 years and comes more than a year after he and Castro surprised the world in December 2014 by announcing that the countries would begin normalizing relations. On Monday, Obama's first stop in his first full day in Cuba was Revolutionary Square, home to memor memorial to Cuba independence hero Jose Marti. Russia is demanding urgent talks with the U.S. in response to alleged ceasefire violations by opposition groups in Syria. The country's defense ministry said it would act unilaterally from Tuesday to end alleged violations of the cessation of hostilities agreement on how to deal with those violations. In a statement, the Russian military has accused the U.S. of dragging its feet on responding to Moscow's proposals and rules for joint monitoring of the Syria ceasefire and response to violations, saying delays are uh, Respond at, at, and response violations saying the leagues are leading to civilian casualties. Lieutenant General Sergio Rutskoy disclosed that if the U.S. fails to respond to its proposals in a joint response, the Russian military will have to start using force against those who break the truce. The warning by Moscow came as rebel factions and government representatives continued gathering in Geneva under mediation from the UN in an attempt to bring an end to the five-year-old conflict. North Korea has launched five projectiles into the sea of Japan, its latest military maneuver amid concerns about its nuclear program. South Korea has disputed Yongyang's description of the projectiles as missiles, saying that the objects were smaller short-range projectiles, most likely conventional shells. South Korean officials said the five projectiles flew about 200 kilometers after being launched from an area about 20 kilometers south of Hamhang.
Tensions have been soaring on the divided Korean Peninsula since the North carried out its fourth nuclear test on January 6, followed a month later by a long-range rocket launch that was widely seen as a disguised ballistic missile test. We now move on to sports. Our style, and that's what he delivered. Super Eagles will arrive at the city of Kaduna on Tuesday in preparation for the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against the Pharaohs of Egypt. The team will have a light training session on Tuesday morning at the National Stadium, Abuja, before heading out to Kaduna. Arsenal prodigy Alex Iwobi was the first foreign-based player to arrive at the Super Eagles camp in Abuja on Sunday before Turkey-based Omar Amino. Godfrey Obabona, John Mikel Obi, Odion Igalo, and Aaron Samuel. England based goalkeeper Carl Ikeme, defenders F. Ambrose and Abdullahi Sheho, midfielders Kelechi Hana Chan, Azubike Okechuku, and forwards Ahmed Musa, Moses Simon, Victor Moses, and Fanedo Adi are expected to land in Abuja on Monday this night. South Africa based goalkeeper Daniel Akpeyi, defendants Stanley Amuze and Elderson Echejeli, and midfielder Ogeyo Naze would arrive in Lagos this night and travel to Abuja by first flight on Tuesday. German based defender Leon Balogo, who, was, who has some strength trouble, is being programmed for the return leg in Alexandria on Tuesday next week. Both ties against the Pharaohs of Egypt is a must win for the Super Eagles. Uncapped Burnley goalkeeper Tom Hilton has been called up to replace injured Joe Hart in the England squad for games against Germany and the Netherlands. Hart and winger Raheem Sterling were taken off during Manchester City's 1-0 derby defeat by United on Sunday. Keaton, 29, will join the squad for the friendlies against Germany in Berlin on Saturday and the dash at Wembley on March 29. England boss Roy Hodgson would not be adding to his outfield players. The Burnley captain joins fellow goalkeepers Jack Butland and Fraser Forster in the squad with England due to travel to Berlin on Friday. And that's it on Court TV Prime Time News. But before we go, a quick recap of our top stars. Thank you so very much for staying with us tonight. I am Nena Oragua. Do have a beautiful night rest.